Now, in your first episode, you'll have to work for scale. What do you mean, talk to your agent? You want M&M candies in the dressing room? What do you mean you don't want any blue ones in there? Actors. Hello, it's Jim from JetsonAxe.com, where we are all about developing for the NVIDIA Jetson Developer Kits. Today, we are going to show you how to communicate with servo motors from the Jetson Nano over I2C. As a little bit of a background, there are four different types of serial communication ports on the Jetson Nano. Most obvious is USB. That's where you plug in your mouse and keyboard. The other serial ports are kind of hidden away in the headers. In a previous episode, we encountered UARTs. There are two UARTs exposed. One of the UARTs is the serial console. The second UART is in the J41 GPIO header. And then there's SPI. SPI is not exposed in the default Jetson Nano disk image, but it can be added to the J41 GPIO header by modifying the device tree. You can add a couple of them. Let me know in the comments below if you want a video on how to do that. And then last but not least, we have I2C, which stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit. Depending on who you're talking to, some folks call it I2C, others call it I2C or IIC. I2C is pretty common in the maker community. It's a serial communications bus widely used for attaching lower speed peripherals to processors or microcontrollers over short distances, let's say less than a meter or two. One reason for this popularity is that it's simple to wire. You only need two wires, the data and the clock, and power and ground to get your communications up and running. Each of the serial buses has disadvantages and advantages, but having several of them to choose from makes it easier to pick your poison. The serial bus is the pathway on how we talk to a connected device. There's what is called a protocol, which we use to talk over the bus. This is all low level, pretty straightforward stuff. There are several libraries available to interface with I2C. I2C Live is popular for C and Python programmers. Today, we are going to use CircuitPython from Adafruit. The device that we are going to connect to the Jetson is a PWM driver. This is a 16-channel, 12-bit servo driver interface, PCA9685. This particular board is manufactured by Adafruit. This is a pretty popular chip. It's been used in the JetBot and JetRacer projects at NVIDIA. The PCA9685 is typically used for servos in the similar PWM-driven electronic motor speed controllers, but you can also use them for LEDs. Using only two pins, you can control 16 free-running PWM outputs. You can even chain up to 62 breakouts to control 992 PWM outputs. Let me know if you do more than 985 of them. I'd like to see that. Okay, let's get ready. We will wire this puppy up. On the Jetson Hacks Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named ServoKit. Let's clone that repository. And switch over to that repository's directory. Let's take a look at the GPIO header pinout. There are two I2C buses exposed on the header. Bus one is on pins three and five. SDA is on 3, SCL is on 5. We will use that in the first part of our demonstration. And then bus 0 is on pins 27 and 28. SDA is on 27 and SCL is on 28. Let's switch back over to our servo kit repository. Let's scroll down a little bit here and we can see that there is a wiring diagram. To wire up the PCA9685 breakout board, you bring 3.3 volts to VCC. That's on pin one in this diagram. Ground on pin six goes to ground on the breakout board. In this diagram, we are using bus zero. So that's pin 27, and that goes to SDA on the breakout board, and pin 28 goes to SCL on the breakout board. If you're using bus one, then pin three goes to SDA and pin five goes to SCL. We can power the servos in one of two ways. 
We can supply five or six bolts in through this barrel jack that we've added to the board, or we can supply through the V-minus input. The servos can draw quite a bit of power, so in general you want to go through this five volt input. Okay, once we are all wired up, we can check to see if we can see the device. You can see that there are seven I2C buses. They belong to the I2C group. Let's check our group membership. Our username is Jetson Hacks. You can see that we do not belong to I2C currently. I have it connected to bus zero here. There it is, hex 40. If you do not see your device here, then you will not be able to talk to it. Let's install our servo kit software. Let's take a look at the script. The first thing that we do is set up our permissions. Note that we have to pass the user along. Let's take a look at that script. This dollar sign one is our username. So we add ourselves to the I2C group. We create a GPIO group and add ourselves to it. And then we set up a UDEV rule for GPIO. And then we update the UDEV rules to include the GPIO in this final line. And then we install pip for Python 3. And then we install Adafruit Circuit Python Servo Kit. So let's do that. There are services installed on your system which need to be restarted. Would you like to restart these without asking? Yes, please. The Adafruit Circuit Python Servo Kit uses the Jetson GPIO library. That's why we had to add the GPIO group to our permissions. When we add ourselves to a group, the changes only take effect on login. So let's log off and log in. Okay, the Jetson rebooted, opened up the browser in the terminal window again. Let's take a look and see what groups we belong to now. And you can see that we've been added to I2C and GPIO, just like we said we would. Let's take a look at our demo code. In the full demo, we are going to use a game controller to control our two servos. Here's how we do our setup. We import ServoKit and some appropriate libraries. For our game controller library, we are going to use this. So here's where we set up our bus, SCL1 and SDA1, our I2C bus zero. We initialize the ServoKit. And then we do a couple of sweeps just to show that it's alive. These are for analog servos. There are a couple of different library calls. One is for a regular servo, one's for a continuous servo. For an electronic speed controller for a motor, we probably would use a continuous servo model also. For a regular servo, we pass a desired angle in degrees. This line basically maps the controller value to a range between zero and 180. And then we set the angle of the servo. And then for a continuous servo, we set the throttle attribute and this is between minus one and one. So it's a floating point number. Okay, we've hooked up a little hobby servo. We are on I2C bus one, pins three and five. Let's go into Python. Let's import the servo kit library. Let's grab a servo kit. The default bus is I2C bus one on the Jetson Nano, so we don't have to pass any additional parameters. It takes a second to initialize. And now for the moment of truth, let's try to set the servo to a given angle. Let's say 137. Oh. We got lucky again. Let's try another angle. Let's try 25. Three. Ooh, 
177. So it looks like our servo works. Let's try some larger servos and a little bigger demo. Quit out of this. Let's install our gamepad. We are going to install the gamepad controller library. And for the game controller that we are using, which is a Sony PS4 DualShock, there's a little bit of an issue, so we patch that. Let's switch over to the repository. Install the gamepad. Let's make sure our game controller works. Let's install a little test program. We're going to use our Bluetooth connection on our Wi-Fi card. I will leave a link in the description below on how to install the Wi-Fi card. Bluetooth settings. We're going to add. Let's set our game controller into pairing mode. We hit the share button and then the PlayStation button. Starts pulsing and it shows up. Here it is. Let's test it out. It looks like our game controller works. Let's run our demo. We are wired up to pins 27 and 28, which is bus zero. It takes a few seconds for the library to initialize and we should be able to control the servos. The left joystick is the bottom servo. And the right thumbstick is the top servo. And of course you can run both of them at the same time. 